and welcome to the Bob and Sandy show. And we have up in the north central Wisconsin here, it's 30 degrees, it's still snowing. And uh, last night uh, it was really, the wind was really whipping around and we had a, a chill factor, a wind chill factor of about zero. Um, I have about four inches of snow out on my deck, so it really came down last night. Um, it was cold, to say the least. Anyway, um, the first uh, little story um, I have uh, is I'm going to tie it in uh, with Duane's writings. Uh, so I promise I have a point in the end. Um, I had watched a show last night, Iron Chef, and the reason I watched it, it was because their ingredient, their secret ingredient was cheese. Now, this was a Japanese Iron Chef show. Now, you know that Japanese and cheese do not go in the same sentence, let alone, you know, in their food, because it's usually a food that they don't eat, and uh, for probably for good reason. Uh, anyway... I had lived in Hawaii about 40 years ago, and a couple of the corporation friends, um, Linda and Leah, had just moved over to the islands. And so I actually had them over one day. I had made some sushi, and she, they both really, really liked it, and they said they, uh, Linda said she wanted to make it. So I gave her all the, the tools and the ingredients. I gave her the sushi rice, the nori, the dried shrimp, the shrimp, the cucumber, and the carrot, Japanese rice vinegar, wasabi, shoyu, uh, pickled ginger, and the bamboo sushi mat. Not only that, but I gave her explicit instructions on how to do it. So the next day she calls me and she says, come on over. She says, I made sushi. I said, okay. Yeah, so over I go. Well, she had it on a platter. And so her twin sister, myself, and her, all we all sat down. I have to say it wasn't too aesthetic looking. Uh, but, you know, you can forgive somebody for that. New to the islands, new to making sushi. Okay, so into the mouth it went. The next moment was pretty unforgettable. Both her and her, her, her sister and I, we jumped up from the table and ran into the bathroom to spit it into the toilet. Um, we're wiping out our mouths as we come back to the table. And it's like, how did you make this? Well, first, she didn't use the sushi rice. She used long grain rice, you know, the kind that doesn't stick together so everything will fall out of the sushi. Then instead of using the seasoned Japanese rice vinegar, she used orange marmalade. Now, you know marmalade and nori seaweed do not go real well together. Well, instead of the shrimp, she used tuna fish. You know, I, I still laugh about it today, and this is 40 years later. Um, so what does this have to do with Duane's writings and the new UU and the real guides? I think it boils down to what we're given. We're given all the tools and the ingredients to get to the real side. But what do a lot of people do? They go on to use something entirely of their own making and uh, now if it worked and got you to the real side well great all well and good but usually it doesn't and we're so lucky we have the tools from Duane and we can meet them both Duane and Ray Bazaar in our dreams we sing the new you you before we go to bed and we learn to travel eventually to the real side where we find all our answers can I interrupt you for a second? Yeah. Well, since Sandy is talking about tools, my dream yesterday morning <laughs> was I dreamed of a wheelbarrow full of tools and how effortless it is to use those tools when we're helping Dwayne. All right. Now, if that doesn't tie in. <laughs> cool. Well. On to the next. Uh, Bob has a, a very virulent form of MRSA. 
it was a nasty outbreak of that uh, germ. It covered really his whole body. I could be very graphic, but I won't go into it. Um, I have to go. I sat down to the computer the other day, and I was doing some uh, looking up some herbs. Well, anyway, a little advert advert. Perfect. advertisement I have a can't talk today advertisement popped up on the computer and it was about a natural bacterium that gets rid of MRSA needless to say I was pretty intrigued by this and I was actually tired of doing you know like five loads of laundry a day and disinfecting everything with a solution of tea tree oil lavender and peppermint oils mixed in water and I basically had to go every, over everything he touched, whether it was a light switch or whether it was a couch he sat on or, well, touching the piano keys, you, you know, you get the picture here. The natural supplement uh, the article talked about was a bacterium called Bacillus subtilis, and it said it costs around $14. Well, that sounded pretty good. I printed out the info and showed it to Bob when he came home from work. We actually tried calling a place listed on the internet, but they were closed for the day. So we called around the city because we thought it was important enough that he should have it like ASAP. So we found out we could get it at Walmart of all places. So we drove that night and we picked up the last five bottles that they had. And then I suggested Bob take the, creek, the three capsules, which they say you should take at night and get it into his system, which he did. He uh, went to work the next day and he came home and he says, you'll never guess what. I said, what? All the breakouts and the redness is gone from the MRSA. And I thought, wow, this is how that stuff really works. And uh, the real guides, this is how it works with the real guides. Something you need or the information you need finds its way to you. It can be a hint or it can dir be directly placed in front of you, as was the case for Bacillus subtilis for MRSA. And I, it, we're, we're just so, so, we get so much information that helps us all along the way. Um, the other day, Bob had an appointment for his pilot's physical. Um, a lot of times I go into the doctor's office with him, but this wasn't that interesting. It was kind of like, oh, hum. So I sat in the waiting room and I, I grabbed a Better Homes and Gardens magazine. I started flipping through the pages and a man came in with a baby in a car seat. He fed the baby the rest of a baby bottle that he had, and then he pulled him from the uh, car seat. And this was a young baby. Oh, okay, yeah. No, it's not a pro probiotic. It's a bacterium from the Bacillus subtilis. Oh, I evidently were actually set up to sell it, which we didn't know. That's great. Um, anyway, getting back to the story, um, the baby was young. It was small, but he seemed almost robotic. He seemed really dumbed down. His energy was so off for a young baby. You know, and I tried to get the baby's attention. He just looked down in the dumps, even to just looking at the floor. I asked the father how old the baby was, and he said, oh, four months. I tried talking to the baby, and he just looked at me with a nothingness expression. <laughs> Empty. I, also, I, however, noticed he was looking at the magazine I had, the magazine had bright yellow, orange, and green squash on its cover. So I held it up so he could see it better, and I started telling about the colors of the squash, and I started talking about squash, and maybe he could eat it one day. And he started paying attention to me, but no smiles. He was just listening and looking. Um, I paged through the magazine, and I showed him more pictures, and I told him, I bet you know a lot of things you can tell me. Pretty soon, as I was talking to him, he was jumping up and down and laughing. 
And the funny, the funny thing was I showed him a picture of pizza, of a pizza. And he, he said, oh, with his little lips. And I thought, uh-huh, this four-month-old baby knows pizza already. Nothing else, but he knows pizza. And I figured, oh, good, the parents must eat it then. Um, then the father was called by the nurse, and he put the baby back into the car seat, and the baby adopted his robotic, dumbed-down look again. And it took a long while to me to break through to this baby. Usually it doesn't take that long. Uh, you know, before he was at, you know, actually filled with joy. Uh, I, I'm sure he had his shots at one or two years, like we've talked about before, what this does to the child. But I guess I hadn't experienced it lately that it could have such a profound effect. Uh, even if the baby wasn't autistic, it's going to have an effect on that baby when they get their vaccinations and injections. Uh, when the baby was all smiles and laughing, I'm sure he remembered some of the real side that he had come from. You know, soon my husband came out from his physical and we left to go over. Actually, we went over to a person still in the corporation to pick up a book Paul Twitchell had written called Letters to Gale 3. It was an original book written before he translated Anyway, it ended up, she didn't have the book. She only had one and two, said she must have given the other way. She said she would keep looking. If you look at those books, make sure you get them before Paul Twitchell uh, had died because from then on, they were changed. The writings, some things were left out or uh, added into um somebody else's ideas of, of what what is. Um, the other day I got help from the real guides. I was going to order some supplements listed on the internet. These were different supplements than the MRSA. The phone line was busy. I thought I had set the card down, Bob's card, next to me. The next thing I knew, the, the charge card I was going to use went mi missing. Well, I don't like the wrath of Bob when I misplace or lose something. I looked under the chair, under the coffee table, on the coffee table. I had even wiped my hands over the keys on the computer. Uh-oh, not there. Well, I got up to get a drink of water, and then I did a few things around the house, hoping I would eventually find it if I dropped it. I was looking. I didn't see it. When I sat down at the computer again, the charge card was on the middle of the keyboard, and I know I wiped my whole hand over it, and it wasn't there. But then it was. Sometimes the negative powers, I think, just like to show us how powerful they really are. Well, in the end, they aren't. Not with the real guides. Also, now my cell phone doesn't work. Has it worked since Friday? So... Um, Something's at work there, too. I guess I'm not supposed to use it or I need a different one or something's going on. This is, uh, we have in our kitchen, we have an architectural feature called the piano. It looks, part of the uh, upper part of it looks like a grand piano jutting out into the room. And above this, you can place greenery, vases, baskets, and it has lighting up there. Well, when we first moved into the house, which is about seven years ago, I had placed an orange light up there because it seemed to give off a nice glow. String lights. And string lights. So this is the other orange light behind the string lights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, I just left it because it's really high to climb up there, and I'm not the best with the ladders. And so I left it the way it was. The other night, we were sitting in the living room, and I happened to look up at the, the piano part of the, where the orange light used to be, and I noticed an orange glow. So I got up and looked in the kitchen, and there it was. The light was on again. Well, you never, you never told anybody that they all quit working about three years ago. Yeah, I did. Well, all of them, yeah, quit working. I did three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Where were you? 
anyway, um, really interesting things happen with the real guides around. And an orange is a really good color. It's a healing, healing light. Um, I'm, I like the color orange. It's pretty. But anyway, I was glad to see it was on again. I don't have to climb up there. Um, <clears throat> I'll go into just a couple visions I had during the new UU. Oh, speaking of visions, um, or speaking of to one of the, the Eckes home that we went over the other day from the corporation, uh, she says to me, she says, they never mentioned Marjorie's death either in Harold's talk or at the seminar, she says, and I find this really odd. And so I told her a little bit about uh, what I had seen, and that Margie really didn't look too good um, on the astral plane, and then Bob told her about Claudie's vision, and she, uh, she did take it in, so she goes, hmm, but any, <clears throat> anyway, um, to get on with this. Well, I, well, what was so weird was here you have Harry married to Marjorie for I don't know how many years. And I mean, I mean, it's his ex-wife. They had a daughter. And, and they, and yeah, and they had a kid and, and every, I mean, she was, Marjorie was a big wheel in the uh, corporation and Harry didn't even give honorable mention. Nothing about her. I mean, that was so bizarre. It's even more bizarre when you uh, hear that he gave honorable mention to Paul Newman when he died. He had a big write-up in the mystic world, and Harold went on and on and on about how wonderful Paul Newman was. But not one word about Marjorie. So, interesting Interesting little facts. Anyway. You know, and, and it should have been something on this order. If if Harold was was true, he would have got up there and announced my ex wife died and I took her up to the eighth yeah. eighth <laughs> level of, of And all is well. <laughs> and all is well and you know, it's what it should have been, but it wasn't there. So it seems like he's sweeping a few things under the table. Or under the rug. Um, any more? Anything else? Uh, no. Okay, I'll just talk about two visions I had. Excuse me. During the new UU, I was uh, sitting doing the new UU, singing it, and all of a sudden, a huge white light comes from beneath, and this huge white light grows into Paul Twitchell. And he was just huge, and it was so bright and so light. I have seen light around people. I have seen it come from above, but this was the first experience I had as it was coming from beneath him and growing into him. It was really, really quite astounding. And uh, the other uh, one I'll talk quickly about um, was I sat in a chair looking outside, singing the new you, you, and I had Ray Bazaar Tars actually fill the whole sky while I was looking out. And that was really beautiful, as was fall. Um, I love these pictures and these visions we get. I'll um, I'll talk a little bit about I'll just talk a little bit about a dream I had a few nights ago, and then Bob can go into his his dream. I in the dream I was I had on a yellow suit with a white blouse. I was actually laying down. A man had been standing aside of me and said clear. I knew in the dream, I knew he meant my lungs. I, I in the physical here have a lot of, have pretty bad asthma and frequently have trouble breathing. So um, even a few years ago, I had Ray Bazaar in a dream and he told me 
that I have a serious sinus problem. So I I was really glad when I woke up to hear that it looks like it's clearing up and and I am working on it. I'm I'm doing the jelly juice and I'm doing this John Ellis water and stuff. So um, I'm also working on getting some herbs in on the picture. So um, you want to go into your dream? Yeah, but I've noticed that ever since I, uh, a few days ago when I started taking this thing for the uh, MRSA, yeah. it's been clearing up my sinuses. My my sinus infection is disappearing at the same time. So it's really uh, it's a multi-purpose, a wonderful thing to be taking. Yeah, he's had chronic sinus infection the whole time I've known him, which is forever. But uh, that has he sounds a lot clearer than he has too in the past. He's not so stuffy all the time. A few minutes ago, you we were talking about the uh, the dark side. What what was it again that you said about the dark side? The dark side. Yeah. Well, you didn't use the word dark side. But oh, you mean the negative? The, yeah, the negative. Well, they try to place things in our way, or try to show us how powerful they are. When well, they're really not. I had I had a dream on uh, last Monday morning, and the dream was about how treacherous the deceptors are. And in the dream, it showed the deceptors in a room, and they and they had brought this guy out, and they laid him down on a table. And the next thing, they took four samurai swords and stuck it. Two at the chest level and two at the abdomen level. Through the person? Yeah, right, right into them. Ouch. You know, but it, but they did it in such a way as not to. He didn't die instantly, but he had the force lift these swords stuck into him, and I thought that's it. The influence. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. That so that they are very treacherous. So be thankful that you have protection from the guides. And um, there's a, a couple other dreams that I had, and uh, maybe you could comment on these, Dwayne. Are, are you there today? Yes, I'm there today. Hi, Dwayne. How are you doing? Okay, and I would like to thank Harold for mentioning me uh, and uh, in his talk. He did? Yeah. That's right. That's right. Didn't Connie? Didn't I didn't hear her say that. What what did he what did he say, Dwayne? Well, I was shown that I'd be Paul Newman. That you'd be called in? Did she hear me right? No. No, she doesn't <laughs> listen. <laughs> I had an experience before two thousand and one. I shared this many times where I was in this high rise building and all glass and then I was the viewpoint seeing the personal self and uh, the impression was that I was the Paul Newman, the greatest architect ever. Paul and the new man. Mm -hmm. So it was nice of Harold to mention me. Well, yeah. Yeah, he mentioned Paul Newman. Yes. <laughs> but in his mind, he was thinking it was Paul Newman. That's, that's right. You were in the mystic world. I mean, yeah. how... How famous can you get? Yeah. And he even mentioned him during his seminar talk because I remember it distinctly. So you were mentioned. Yes. Yeah, the real Paul Newman. Yeah. The, the, fake, real, the, the, fake, the fake Paul Newman died. Yeah. Right, right. Yep. <laughs> you got to love it. One, uh, one of the dreams that I had was I was out on the edge of the galaxies and the universes, right on the, the very edge of them. And I, I could see like all of creation from the edge. And then I woke up from that dream. What, what thank you about that? Well, you're the air traffic controller, right? Well, I, I consider myself an air traffic suggester. 
Okay, well, whatever. Okay, if you want to be the air traffic jester, that's fine. Well, but, said uh, jester. Oh. Jester. <laughs> I, tell an, I tell an airplane what to do, and, and they do it if they feel like it. I think I'll keep Jester. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> He's fooling us, Andy. He wants to be the air traffic jester. Okay. I, I know. It's fine. It's fine. I, I don't mind. So the thing is that, uh, so you're, again, you know, just like when you're uh, in your tower, you're observing, you know, you're observing the, uh, you know, what's in the air. So, you know, looking over creation, you know, there's a view, isn't there? So uh, you got, you got the bigger view of what's going on. And, uh, the next, well, another dream that I had that was related to that, and, and I, I think this is helpful, is I dreamed I was in the military being given recognition training. So I, I thought maybe the guides, the real guides are helping me recognize you all is. Well, it works both ways. In other words, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> it is to where, yes, they provide, uh, you know, like your parents, they provide something, they support you until you can support yourself. So it's, it's the old saying, I'll meet you halfway, you see. So uh, you're doing your part, too. And it's interesting, they've, uh, they use the military a lot because, again, the idea is, is that, yeah, this is, this is maneuvers. You're maneuvering your way uh, through creation. You've decided to step up. You know, most of the public is not in the military. The military is exceptional and uh, to face things and to earn your stripes, you see. So it all implies. But we do it without uh, the regular military, which is uh, the agenda is is be ready to, you know, destroy the enemy. Uh, we're not about to do that. So the thing is that those things come about in a certain way. But uh, uh, yeah, but that's the idea uh, because you're earning your stripes, you see. And so, again, yes, they're providing what they do. But just like anything, just like in a business or anything, everything shows itself for what it is. It's up to you uh, to decide to, uh, you know, recognize it or not. So, you know, remember when we were in school and uh, I remember there was uh, kids that uh, there was this one girl I remember. I was like in the, probably the third grade. And there's this one girl basically out of the whole school. She was really smart. She skipped grade. But me, I didn't, you know, I was, duh, I didn't care about the school. I just did whatever. But she skipped grades. In other words, she paid attention. She recognized how to do the work so that she could skip things, you see? And so it's up to each individual. Yes, they are. But, you know, they're giving you the hints just like your parents. They're giving you the hints. Uh, but it's up to you, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, go out there and learn to how to survive for yourself. You see, so it's the same idea, but this is all about the is now. It's recognizing the is, this is a bigger picture than, uh, and you can see the difference between uh, what we're doing and uh, the corporation. 